Howdy, I got a song here. I'm working on a demo. Uh, the direction I was given is John Party, which makes me think 90s country, play some telly. And they specifically requested Bender Licks. I'm working on just the outro. I'm playing through my deluxe reverb. That's a late 1965. Um, it's all original except the speaker. It never had the original speaker when I got it. Um, but I'm, run I'm using it as a head. I'm running it to that Morgan 112 cab in my garage and I'm playing the biscuit. And I did not put a bender in the biscuit. I probably won't do that, but uh, I will play some bendery kind of licks. <laughs> So the song's in F-sharp. Uh, I didn't want to try to play a bunch of bender licks in F-sharp. So I tuned down so I could play like I'm in G. And the hard thing for me when I immediately tune a guitar down is that it has lower string tension. So I tend to, I tend to bend, I tend to kind of sail past the target pitch and go a little sharp because the strings aren't pushing back as much as I'm used to when I'm in standard tuning. So let's see what happens here. I didn't hate a lot of that, but uh, let's playlist anyway. I've got kind of a theme worked out for the front part. I kind of want my solos to have an arc to them, you know? I don't want it to just be disjointed licks that I play all in a row. I want it to have a thing that makes sense. It's got a, got a dynamic. Everything you play on every song should have an arc to it. You know, we talked about that in one of the last videos, the shape of a song. That's really just making sure that your arc, your dynamics, your emotion, your um, <clears throat> statement that you're making agrees with everything else, everyone else. It's an ingredient in the same bowl, and you're going to get the product that you want. If the recipe calls for a bunch of sugar and you're playing a bunch of uh, curry, <laughs> it's not going to sound great at the end. It's not that... that Whatever you're baking is going to taste weird, right? If it's got curry instead of sugar. So, um, gosh, food analogies. Sorry. Anyway, uh, here comes another one. might be the one. Let's listen. I like this real slow. That's just, it feels good to me. Cool. Yeah, it's got a bit of a, a quicker section where I where I play a lick over the four and then I repeat it um, a step above over the five chord right and what I was doing was uh, relative to the four I'm bending into the six so I bend six up to the one and then third up to the one same thing on the five chord bend up to the six but actually here, I can actually play the front half of it as a G. I can't do that here because that's not in the key. It gives me sort of a uh, bluesy sound because that's the, that's the flat seven of the key that we're in. So um, I think what I did was
that would be crazy to get that at that speed. Yeah, that's maybe a little too bluesy there. And then up here, I just went for... Uh, Yeah, so it's it's just it's simple bender stuff, but still tells a bit of a story with a little bit of flash in it. You know, I'm I'm not gonna like here's how I practice every bar, shred, shred, shred. That that's great, but guitar players like that. People, listeners, in general, um, I feel like when I play on something like this, that I need to connect with more than just the guitar players in the room. You know, who are really gonna. The more technical stuff you pull out, guitar players are going to hear, oh man, he's been practicing that, that's really great. And that's cool and all, but, you know, my my world that I exist in is is commercial uh, radio. And it's country radio, but it encompasses so much. Like, your average session uh, for a country artist encompasses so many different styles. It's actually really fun, you know. A lot of people have a lot of complaints with, with country radio, and I totally get that. But from my perspective, from the musician's perspective in the studio, we can go from this kind of 90s stuff to outlaw country. We can go to Muscle Shoals uh, kind of soul. We can go to straight R&B. We can go to pop. Um, we can go to hard rock, you know. Often <laughs> with, with country records these days, the only thing that's country about what you're hearing is the person's vocal. It might be some guy from Georgia, you know, but the only thing he's listened to is hip hop his entire life. That's Morgan Wallen, basically. That's all he's listened to. He's an R&B singer, but he's got a Georgia accent. And, uh, you know, he's just a really great writer and singer and performer and, and has an incredible team behind him making his records, too. So, um, you know, next time you hear something on the radio and you're like, oh, I hate this stuff, just realize we had a lot of fun making it, <laughs> you know. I don't I don't like playing on things that I think people are going to are going to get upset about, but there's always going to be that crowd. The bigger you get, the bigger your platform is, whether it's country radio, whether it's YouTube, you know, I bet the guys that have millions and millions of uh subscribers have a fairly large contingent of of comments that are like you suck, you should quit, and they're probably like okay. <laughs> it's just you deal with all that at every level. So, um I got way off track, but Suffice it to say, I have a lot of fun on pretty much every session I do because we change styles um, and influences and directions and angles all the time. And it's really fun. So I want to get some other cabs so I don't have my Morgan blowing everybody up in the garage. I'm sure you all know Tim Pierce in L.A. Tim's incredible. Incredible guitar player. Incredible musician. I'm really gotten a lot out of his videos, you know, where he's reminiscing on songs he's played on or, he, or he's tracking or kind of doing what I'm doing, you know, and just hearing his brain work, I'm like, oh, man, uh, I really envy his cab setup. He's got like a big ISO booth box for a 412, you know, I would love to do that. Right now, I'm I'm just wide open in the garage through a 112. And so after 9 p.m., I either plug into a Two Notes Torpedo, or I play my Rev, or, you can't see it because it's behind me, I actually got an Oxbox. So, um, you know, I've got options for when volume's a problem. But I would love to build an ISO box that's big enough to not make it sound like it's choking my speakers, you know. I have that problem in, in some studios I work in in Nashville where uh, I'm playing a 60-watt basement, but my 212 cab, my Bogner cab, or when I was playing a matchless cab or whatever, it's in a coat closet, you know? And there just isn't the space for the speakers to really move air. It's like, it's so such a compact space that when they do move air, it fights back and you can hear it it kind of sounds choked a little bit. So, you know, you got to play, you got to play the the room your cab is in too. That's a big deal um, in the session world. Uh, some studios, they're in much bigger rooms and you can turn up and you can play a 100 watt Marshall through it and it's awesome. And it doesn't bleed because 
you know, they, they built the room for that. Other places you're in a padded coat closet. <laughs> Even big studios that you, that you make fairly big records in, you know. So anyway, I'm rambling. I will see you all later.